Hi, this is Jeff with Sketchy Wisdom, and this is a brown paper bag. Now, these used to be pretty common, although these days it's only about a 50-50 shot at the grocery store, whether anybody even bothers to ask you if you want paper or plastic. I mean, it's possible you may not even have handled one of these things, but of course, in the olden days, it's all we had. Its use is pretty obvious. I mean, you put stuff in, you take stuff out, you haul stuff around, but uh, during the time of Jim Crow, which is to say before the 1964 Civil Rights Act and even for some time thereafter, the brown paper bag was sometimes used as a kind of social sorting mechanism. Professional organizations, social clubs, political institutions, governments, schools, and even churches screened human beings for membership and inclusion based on a comparison between the color of one's skin and the color of a brown paper bag. Restaurants, bars, other places of entertainment sometimes placed a brown paper bag at the entrance as a message to patrons that if they were as dark or darker than that bag that they simply weren't welcome and that the consequences for walking in anyway could be pretty severe. Well, we have a new administration uh, taking office even as I speak and uh, honestly I don't intend to address that today. I kinda have to let that reality sink in a bit before I can calmly and rationally address that issue. But I do think it's important to keep in mind that this new president came to power as a result in no small part of certain campaign promises, among which is that certain people would be removed and barred from the country. People who have only one thing in common, that based on their ethnicities and countries of origin, many of them would have a better than even chance of failing a brown paper bag test. But that's not what I want to talk about either. Uh, today, what I really want to talk about is a peculiar sort of political paper bag test that's fragmented the only party that would have been capable of preventing the catastrophe this country faces now, in my opinion. Now, let me present my bona fides here before we go on. I, if you hadn't guessed by now, I am a liberal and a Democrat of a certain age. I was born before the Civil Rights Act. I was born before women could have a checking account or a credit card in their own name without their husband's or responsible male relative's permission. That's right, in the USA. Now, I won't tell you how old I am, but all the Kennedys were alive when I was born, and I watched the original Star Trek series in its first run on network TV on a black and white television set that was made out of wood. I was born before Roe v. Wade, and my mother, being an old surgical ER and scrub nurse serving in Chicago back in the 50s, convinced me early of both the necessity and the rightness of women being trusted with their own reproductive choices and of the feminist cause in general. Now, you might guess from all this that I might have been a supporter of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election, and you would be correct. For me and millions like me, she represented the last truly prosperous era in American history. She represented a political and economic philosophy that business and labor might actually, you know, work together rather than being constantly at odds. She carried around a lot of baggage, and a lot of baggage that was not her own was loaded onto her by her political enemies. Despite this, she won the popular vote by a much wider margin than John F. Kennedy won the presidency. And yet, because of the electoral system, she lost the election. I accept this. What I don't accept is being subject to a political paper bag test by certain of the progressive wing of my own party and those identifying as social democrats or independents. Now, Senator Sanders ran a spirited nomination campaign. I respect him, his views, and his accomplishments, but he lost the Democratic nomination. Now, many of his progressive supporters used and continue to use the same rhetoric as the Trump campaign during the nomination in the election. The, the system was rigged. The fix was in. The elites were in charge. I mean, real honest to God, French Revolution stuff. But because Clinton lost the presidency due to the vagaries of the Electoral College, uh, the implication, unproven, that Sanders would have won in her place has led to a certain separation and a certain climate within the party. So-called progressives and social democrats taking on nicknames and websites like the Young Turks, practicing amazing triumphalism, considering they have yet to really win anything and that the current 
climate under the current administration in Congress, that their victories are going to be few and far between. Uh, labeling we Clinton supporters, uh, tail-end baby boomers, and leading-edge Gen Xers as neoliberals and corporate stooges, they're engaging in some ideological purity tests, in my opinion. Uh, a competition to see who's more progressive than whom. A uh, political paper bag test, ironic if only for the fact that most of this cohort is white and relatively comfortable. Now, I consider myself progressive. But maybe that means something different to you. Uh, for us, pro progressive meant uh, being for equal rights for black people and other people of col color, for women, uh, for all those in addition to we straight white males. A stable social safety net guaranteeing equality of opportunity, allowing everyone a platform from which to succeed and pursue their own happiness. Apparently, today's progressives believe those struggles are no longer relevant. Uh, there are apparently certain young women willing to trade reproductive rights for free college tuition. Those who would deny their daughters and granddaughters the same rights and freedoms they now enjoy. Economic inequality is the only legitimate social justice issue for some of those, as if the needs and concerns of a single black mother with a high school diploma were exactly the same as a college-educated young white woman who's uh, left herself some debt after a graduation party's over. The brown paper bag test in the Democratic Party is real and it is vicious. Uh, worse, it only serves to strengthen the wealthy, conservative, old economy warthogs who now hold power and don't give a damn about our issues at all. There are those clamoring for unity on both sides, repeating the same phrase that both sides agree on 90% of the issues. Well, if that's true, then why isn't that enough? Each side wants unity on their own terms. Each side wants unity, uh, demands loyalty on the part of the other. The party is now consumed by two competing cults of personality, just like the lunatics in Monty Python's Life of Brian who squabble over whether to follow the gourd or the sandal. I'm pretty sure it was Will Rogers who said, I don't belong to any organized political party. I'm a Democrat. I'm afraid too many of these folks don't even know who Will Rogers was. Well, they should find out, if only to realize that they stand on the padded shoulders of giants. For Sketchy Wisdom, I'm Jeff Clothier, and it's time to get a brand new bag.